BYV Television. Right. Good evening and welcome to the interview with me, Samuel Wise Bangura. In tonight's edition of the show, we shall be talking to the country's anti graft boss. Um, the Anti Corruption Commission has come under the radar recently, um, with many people holding the view that um, the commission is being influenced politically and not going after corrupt individuals in the current regime. Uh, many see the fight has been compromised already by the commission. So we shall plunge into those issues after this break. Welcome back, I'm um, Samuel Weiss Bangura, and this is the interview. Uh, my guest tonight is Francis Ben Kaifala, the Commissioner for Civilians Anti Corruption Commission. Good evening, and thanks for accepting to speak to the nation through this platform. Thank you very much, Mr. Mm -hmm. Wise. Right. Um, I know you've been on this particular platform, um, the interview, several times. But let's start off with, um, with what's on the table. Um, the Commission has been accused of. Um, been politically influenced already um, by the current administration owing to the fact that um, the Africanist press published a series of allegations, um, indicts on the office of the First Lady and the ACC came out um, with a press statement saying, no, we're going to go back 14 years to look into the practices of the office. Take us through that particular um, um, point of the ACC. Well, thank you, Samuel. And uh, first of all, I am grateful to the people of Sierra Leone for the support they have given to the fight against corruption mm. since the day I became commissioner to now. And of course, the invaluable commitment of all our stakeholders, including you in the press, uh, people in government, uh, and other civil society actors, but more importantly, the people of Sierra Leone. We are very grateful. Uh, on the issue which you have started with by asking mm. that certain people are saying that the commission has been compromised. Firstly, there has never been a time when the commission has been more independent and autonomous than now. Um, what we are experiencing in Sierra Leone is a novelty in the fight against corruption and I have been discussing this with my colleagues in the sub-region in Africa. We have always focused on a situation where the, the anti-graft institution, there is an attempt or often a, an overpowering by the political party in governance mm. to exact uh, certain measures against people they are opposed to. And uh, we have been blindsided by another problem. And that is what Sierra Leone is experiencing. Mm. The capital in the fight against corruption has been enormous. We are at a point in our lives where the Anti-Corruption Commission and the people of Sierra Leone have taken the fight against corruption to its highest point. Mm. From public education, to prevention, to investigation, to prosecution and conviction, mm. the data and statistics are startling. In fact, it is mind-blowing. Out of 42 cases that we have taken to court, we have only lost two. That is over 90% conviction rate. In the indexes, we are at our highest peak. In Transparency International, we are jumping 12 places in two, three years. Okay? We are at our highest point. We are scoring the highest score in Transparency International scorecard. In the MCC scorecard, we were at 49% when I became commissioner. We jumped to 71% in 2018. We jumped to 79% in 2019. We jumped to 81% in 2020. We are sitting at an excellent position. 
No country in the world has experienced such galloping increase in its fortunes in the fight against corruption as we have in Sierra Leone. So the capital from the fight against corruption, when they say, when people look at Sierra Leone these days, what do they know Sierra Leone for? It's about the successes of the fight against corruption. Personally, as I sit here, when I became commissioner, my own, even my own personal fortunes. Okay, that is not the goal, but it shows the kind of confidence that the world has in our efforts in the fight against corruption. I am president of the network of the anti-corruption institutions in West Africa, NASIWA, which combines all agencies fighting corruption in West Africa. Recently, I was nominated by His Excellency the President, and I was appointed on the Africa Union Advisory Board on Corruption, the highest peak, the highest peak of fighting corruption on the continent. And beyond that, you know the, the awards that have come in. No institution, no individual has seen such things happen. So the credibility of the institution globally and locally is at its highest peak. The personal credibility of the commissioner has been reinforced by the awards. The United, Na the United States government of all the people in the world awarded me from Sierra Leone as the international anti-corruption champion after going through a rigorous vetting because they will not give you that award and embarrass themselves. So my point is, mm. The capital that the country has gained in the fight against corruption is at its zenith. Therefore, interest groups want to hijack. They want to hijack that capital, weaponize it politically against their opponents. In what sense? And it used to be that um, we worry about the ruling government doing that. But the opposition, People who believe that they want to gain access to power want to now come to the ACC and use the ACC to eliminate their opponents. So, for example, the African Express is putting out all this information in the media about the chief minister's office buying fear, paying per diem, entering into contracts. Contracts that the MPPA approved. The institution that has the right to approve certain procurement procedures. And that institution has come out and said, yes, we approve this contract. But they say it is corrupt. When has it been corrupt to buy fear? So, with all the capital that we have gained, all the good things we have done in the fight against corruption, if we do not arrest the chief minister, to them, we are not fighting corruption. Okay? So, this is what is happening, and that is why you notice, for example, the, the political parties have been very active in recent times. It's the because I, I, I was going to watch. ask you, you've just mentioned that it used to be the government um, using the, the commission to eliminate um, opposition, but now it's taking a, a paradigm shift. Uh, um, how is that affecting um, the fight, especially when you think... That is the point. Hmm. The... I am saying in Africa, that was the idea. Mm. It was not about the opposition. It was not about interest groups. Right. It's not about political actors. But in Sierra Leone, the capital that we have gotten in the fight against corruption within this such time is enormous. Mm. So, for example, if I as commissioner with all this capital come out and say somebody is corrupt, trust me, that person will find a long way to argue against his honesty. Mm. So, we are fighting for the for the independence of the commission, not just from the current government, but from other interest groups who believe that we have to do their bidding. And we have to remain in the middle, hold a balance, and do our job professionally. So if somebody says somebody is corrupt, okay, we understand that, but we look into it. If there is no evidence of corruption, we say there is no evidence of corruption. If there is no evidence of the person doing things that are contrary, we say there is none. If there is, we say there is. We are employ the various strategies that we have been employing in fighting corruption that has received global and international acclaim. 
For example, our non-conviction based asset recovery is the most respected in Africa today because no country is doing it like we are doing. These are all things that the country should be celebrating. Are we bad in the fight against corruption today? No, we are not. We are better than we have ever been. I was just looking at the data recently. MCC called for the data on what is happening in Sierra Leone between 2013 and today. Every aspect of the data shows a serious shift in our success rate. For example, in 2015, the ACC merely recover 65 million in, two, in the entire 2015 65 million years today we are talking about 10 billion years 11 billion years we are talking about the conviction rates was just about maximum maximum eight per year now we are talking about 16 18 per year every year every data shows a considerable shift in success rate in the fight against corruption in sierra leone but they are busy trying to weaponize the commission but the message i have for all of them is this when i took this job i knew it was going to be a tough one because of the toxic environment within which i am leading the team at the acc to fight corruption and i came there with a mental strength preparedness mind body and soul to do this for the people of Sierra Leone and I am ready to take on anybody who thinks this that they can stand in the way of that this, this we are going to continue to fight corruption fairly but fiercely that the, was the promise made to the people of Sierra Leone and that is the promise that is going to be kept. let me ask you this question this concept of having different interest groups opposition politicians um, um, with a quest to weaponize the, the ACC against their opponents the opposition, for example, let, I mean, persons belonging to the All People's Congress, for example, they've always argued, advanced arguments that um, the ACC is being used as a tool to go after them. So that is why you see a lot of recoveries, perhaps the, the, the things you're mentioning, the, the accolades you're getting now, the recoveries you've made. I, I, is that the case that the ACC is more aggressive, the ACC is more active when it comes to dealing with opposition and politicians? I mean... Samuel, that is a most unfortunate statement. In 2015, this country was rated to have 70% corruption prevalence. 70% corruption prevalence. That means the corruption that existed in this country between 2015 and 2017 was so high that only 30% could be deemed to be credible. Okay? That was done by Afrobarometer, a credible, internationally respected institution that measures corruption prevalence. That same institution came back to Sierra Leone in 2019 and measured corruption prevalence. That same institution confirmed that the existence of corruption in Sierra Leone has reduced from 70% and it is at the lowest ever of 40%. Now, in 2019, who was in governance? Was it the past? When they came to measure corruption prevalence, were they looking at people who were in the past government? It is not correct. And also, let's now review the data and facts. When it comes to the facts of the fight against corruption, at no time... Have we done more in the current dispensation than we have done before? You've heard of the Scorpio Squad. Who were the Scorpio Squad raiding? Raiding as sting operations. Sting operations go after the present. So when the Scorpio Squad has been going from institutions, from EDSA to SLMA to the teachers to, 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 to health workers, was it in the past government? It's totally untrue. At EDSA, the current director general and his deputy are on, are on suspension. Why is we are doing investigation? Is it in the past government? No. As SLMA, one director general was moved because of corruption. She's standing trial. We have recovered from her over 300 million euros, and we are on the route to recover over 500 million euros from her. Was it in the past government? No. That was the head of that institution. 
when people stole commission of inquiry money in the Ministry of Information, we went after them, arrested them, detained them, investigated them, prosecuted them. They were given custodial sentence, the director and the accountant. Was it in the past government? No. When we have done raid in all sectors of governance, when we investigated the chief, state chief of protocol in state house, was it the past government? No. When we have investigated all these permanent secretaries in these ministries, was it in the past government? No. But let me point out clearly that those people who are making those statements are making a false claim. And again, it is part of the strategy to smear the fight against corruption because, like I told you, the capital that we have acquired in it is so high. But they are forgetting that fighting corruption is not just about arresting people, detaining them, and prosecuting them. What about our great public education that we are doing? What I am doing here now is public education. It's unparalleled. Let, let me, we have a powerful PR system. Mm -hmm. What about the prevention drive that we are doing? We are doing more systems and processes reviews and deploying prevention measures across the board in all sectors than ever before. Is that in the past government? No. Those cases that we are prosecuting in court now, are they people in the past government? Some, yes, because some cases have been there for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. Mm. But I can assure you that not up to 60% concerned people in the past. The truth, Samuel, is this. We are doing our job professionally, fairly, and holding the balance. And some people prefer for us to do their bidding. And because of our independence, we have stood in the middle, stood our ground, and decided to do our job within the parameters of professionalism. And they are unhappy about it. Right. Before, I, I want to take you to um, the recent conclusion following the investigation um, by the ACC on Parliament. But just before that, the, 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 the people you've mentioned that you are investigating or you've investigated, um, you, uh, some have been convicted, some have been asked to pay back. In the words of um, a critical journalist, for example, from Os Dixon, those are small fishes. The bigger fishes are still there. I mean, they continue to swim in corruption. They enjoy everything. But the ACC is not going after them. What's the, wh what's the take of the ACC? That is incorrect. The Anti-Corruption Commission is an evidence-based institution. Sometimes when it comes to investigation, there's a difference between what you know and what you can prove. The burden on us is to prove our case beyond all reasonable doubts. So we do not base our case and investigations on speculation. So for example, when has Thomas Dixon come forward with evidence to the ACC and the ACC did not investigate the big fishes that are swimming, that have been let go? But I have called names. The state chief of protocol, was that not a big fish? The guys in the Ministry of Information, was those, were those not big fish? The electricity department, where the managing director and the deputy are on suspension, are they not big fish? The SLMA, the current head of the Sierra Leone Maritime Administration, Masakoy, is under investigation on procurement issues. Are they not big fish? The problem is the same thing I am saying. It is not because they do not know that we are doing excellently well in the fight against corruption. But everybody has his fish that he wants the ACC to fry for him. So you can fry all the barracudas in the world. You can fry all the catfishes in the world. But this man is looking for his own fish, and he has categorized him as big. As long as you do not barbecue him, all the one million fishes you fry are not important to him because that one fish that he categorizes as big fish is driving a nice car, he's wearing a nice suit, he goes to church or mosque and prays. He thinks that you should do his bidding. The Anti-Corruption Commission has to hold the balance. In as much as we want to ensure a decent accountability space where impunity does not prevail, but we cannot do wish hunt. We have to do our job professionally and fairly, and that's what we are doing.
And that is why we are receiving the awards. Right. And that is why we are receiving the accolades. That is why the country is benefiting from it. That is why in every index across the world, we are today at the highest ever. If we are only going after the past that are doing so. 2018, 2019, 2020, this is 2021. And we are just going up because we are going after the past. I mean, to be honest, let's apply common sense in our analysis. That analysis cannot be correct. Let me take you to the recent um, conclusion um, in the investigation of um, Parliament. Honorable Ibrahim Tawa felt betrayed by the ACC. He felt the ACC is afraid of Parliament because Parliament is a very powerful house to a point that even when things came out clearly that Parliament um, flouted some procurement laws, that Parliament couldn't account for, for, for impress and other monies, the ACC cannot um, a, a, a prosecute. But the, the, the least, the ACC should have asked those members of Parliament, the leadership to refund um, the monies they, they've expended that could not account for Go 2018, 2019, according to him, Parliament was, um, was budgeted for to do oversight functions. Parliament did not. And the, 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 the ACC is saying, no, we can only do some um, system reviews and do prevention going forward. Is the ACC really being afraid of Parliament? Because Parliament is that powerful. The ACC would have to go in front of Parliament. Um, Honorable Tawa is a friend of mine. He's a good guy. I think he has very good intentions. And uh, I think we need people like him in society who can hold their ground, who can believe in what they believe in and go after it doggedly. But uh, again, we have to ensure that there's a balance in what we do. We are an independent institution. He reported or whistle blew a case of corruption he submitted himself to be investigated, so he was not a whistleblower. He was investigated himself, along with other parliamentarians. We did our job fairly. He was involved in the process throughout. And we came out with conclusions. And our conclusions are that there are serious prevention issues in parliament that need to be addressed, firstly, before we now go to liability issues. And that conclusion is within our mandate as per Section 7, 1 of the Anti-Corruption Act of 2008. It's not like what we did is out of our powers. Also, when it comes to prosecuting, we have what we call prosecutorial discretion. Many people benefit from it. We look at certain cases and say, no, this one, for now, let's not prosecute. Let's apply this measure. Okay? No one is afraid of parliament. If we at the ACC were afraid of parliament, if I was afraid of parliament, we were not even going to dare to investigate parliament. We investigated and took statement from the speaker to the clerk, to ordinary mania staff in parliament. There are times when it got so heated that I remember one day the director of finance could not appear at ACC. When he woke up in the morning, his house was, his house was surrounded by the Scorpio squad. And we did not even know that he lives in the same house as the clerk of parliament. So that entire house was under siege. He was arrested and brought to the ACC. Everybody called me all day. I did not even pick the phone. Not because I wanted to embarrass them or I did not have respect for them. But I was doing my job. And this man needed to answer to the ACC. So, to be honest with you, uh, to, for Honorable Sawa to say that we were afraid of parliament, how does that make sense? We were not. But I have told you, Honorable Tawa, like other citizens, may have their own motivations for pursuing certain things the way they pursue. But the ACC is a professional institution, and I leading it, the law requires that I be a lawyer of over 10 years standing with managerial experience, with conspicuous probity. Those requirements were put in the law for a reason, because these things come up. 
because it requires the highest cutting edge professional at the helm of affairs at the ACC. If not, it's easy for people to exert their own influence and power over the ACC. Now, my role as head of the ACC is to resist that, to ensure that my team do their work professionally. It goes through proper vetting, and if we are sure of our position, we roll it out. We have rolled out our position on parliament. We believe that it's a prevention issue. Whether they were to be asked to pay back, no. Why? It's not. The reason is simple. If you give me money to say, go to your constituents and entertain them, Okay, and you do not set a system for me to come back to you and account how I entertained my constituents. I go and entertain them anyway. There is music, there is dancing, you hire people, there are videos of it and everything. But I do not come back to explain to you how I spent the money. If an independent institution goes and looks at it and confirms that indeed you entertain the people, it does not mean you stole the money. It does not mean you ate the money. It's just that there was no system for you to come back and explain or to retire how you spent the money. So if I ask you to pay back that money, it means I am being unfair to you because it was not your responsibility to put the system in place. It was an administrative responsibility by the, the people who set up the financial and administrative architecture in parliament to ensure it. And if they have not, it is also within our mandate under Section 7 of the Anti-Corruption Act to go and work with them to set it up. After we set it up, and they now give you money to go and entertain, and you entertain, and you don't come and retire, that is a different ball game. I, I have just... told you, we do our job, and our requirement is to prove cases beyond all reasonable doubt. Mm. I was going to ask this question. What happens in a situation where those who are supposed to put the system together for proper accountability and transparency to, to happen, they fail to do so? What does the law speak to, to that in terms of holding them accountable for issues like that? And that is why the law says that we can work with them mm. to set up the system. And this is not the first time we are doing so. It is because it is parliament and people want to see that parliamentarians are held, we lock down the country, we detain all of them, we prosecute them, so the state does not function again. That is why they are saying this. But we have done system reviews at almost every, every institution in this country. From water resources, to maritime administration, to, to NATCOM, to Ministry of Finance, to Ministry of Agriculture, to Ministry of Health, everywhere. This is a country that has been broken for years and years. This is a country where people do not even know what to do. They occupy positions, they do not know what steps to take. Many people who occupy government positions are government appointments. They've never ever experienced leading anything, not even sometimes their own households. So when you are dealing with such people, you have to have tact and finesse and also take into consideration the entire country. What is optimal going forward? If prosecution is the best, we employ it. But if we also think that prevention is the best, the law gives us the mandate to do it. And we are doing it excellently. And that is why when corruption has been measured in 2019, unlike 2017 where there was 70% corruption prevalence, now there is a 30% reduction in corruption from 70% to 40%. There is a reduction in the corruption prevalence in the judiciary. There is a reduction in the corruption prevalence in the civil service. There is a reduction in the corruption prevalence in the national revenue collections architecture. Almost everywhere you look, there is a reduction because of these system measures we are deploying. So nobody, the same way our independence did not necessarily mean that it is only for the state not to dictate to us what to do, or the president, or the ministers, no. It also means that other people, due to their own interests, should not dictate to the ACC what to do.
as long as we do our work professionally within the law. That is why I have said, all of them who have been going to the radio, let them show us where what we did was not according to the Anti-Corruption Act. Right. Um, I'm, let me put this. I couldn't resist the urge. How, how often do you dine or wine with, um, with these guys? I know they are your friends. But um, we've had instances where people say, hey, well, how Francis go go after um, this minister or after that person? They look now, they begin to party them. So it, it, it's been compromised already. So how do you deal with your personal relationship and your professional um, line? <laughs> you see, many people do not know who I am. They assume. I smile a lot. I have many friends. But when I took up this job, I told my friends that do not take me, put me in a position where I will have to take decision on you. And those who have crossed that line, whether they slept with me on the same bed, whether we wine and dined the next day together, have realized that I can be a totally different person when it comes to professional responsibility. And I have proved it beyond all reasonable doubts. So, firstly, I don't know who they say I wine and dine with, but that does not mean because I am commissioner, I should now live on space. I live in a society. I have to work in society. But, when it comes to my duties, my duties are my duties. And I exercise them as best as I can with the help of God and of course with the support of my team. Therefore, that statement that, oh, Francis is friends to everybody, he cannot do his job. If I was not doing my job, why then is Sierra Leone trailblazing in the fight against corruption in Africa? Why are we suddenly the best example of a powerful anti graft fight in Africa. Was it because I was lying down in my bed and saying, let the people do whatever they want? No, I wake up every morning and go to the ACC to do my job. And my team is fired up. My team is one of the most professional team anywhere in the world. Imagine how under-resourced we are. Imagine how challenging the environment is for our work and we are doing all this substitute that with us being properly resourced and everything this team at the acc can change the alone in a way that nobody has ever imagined i right. trust them for that let's go let's go to the provinces i mean your provincial tours what 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 what, what um significance does that put to the fight against corruption because i see you go um, across the country, having town hall meetings, engaging local people, authorities, and all of that. What, what's the significance of that to the fight? Well, over the time, we believe that Sierra Leone is free town. And particularly recently, certain people who sit all day on social media believe that they are Sierra Leone. And what they say is the end of the matter. But uh, I know that free town it's just about 1.2 it's, it's just about 1.2 million people maximum 1.5 million people out of an almost 8 million population so our work cannot be limited to that sphere alone one of the greatest successes of this tenure in the fight against corruption is our outreach is our community mobilization if our people-based approach to fighting corruption, Samuel, you, even you cannot deny that at no time has this cause on the fight against corruption taken center stage in the Sierra Leonean's life than now because of a deliberate shift towards moving the fight from an elitist fight based in Freetown and focused in Freetown to the entire Sierra Leone. So part of that agenda is to move the People's Commission to the people. Before, commissioners used to go to Bo, McKinney, and Kenema and hold meetings there. We have decided that we have to go beyond those 
And for the first time in the history of Sierra Leone, the commission is moving to every sphere of the country, holding open town hall meetings where we declare you can ask anything, you can say anything, you can make any comment on the fight against corruption. But most importantly, we want your feedback after three years of leading one of the most successful fights in the fight against corruption in Africa. It cannot just be about international indexes. You tell us what you think. We have gone from Moyamba to Mashujong to Shabro Island. We have gone to Mongo in Falaba. We have gone to Kamakwe in Kaina. We have gone to Maburuka. We have gone to Kwedu. These are places where there is one recurring team when we get there. Firstly, it shows that the people of Sierra Leone, and when I say the people of Sierra Leone, I do not mean just free town, are very happy with the fight against corruption. The report we are getting from them is that at no time have they felt the fight against corruption in their lives than now. And they are happy, not just the fact that that is happening in their lives, that a high profile public servant like the commissioner is leaving the comfort of his air-conditioned offices to go to them in Bond, sits on the high seas, on the waters, go into Bond Island, sit with them and have conversation. In Kono, all the 14 paramount chiefs in Kono came. They poured libation for the health of the president of the Sierra Leone, of Sierra Leone for the health of the commissioner of the Anti-Corruption Commission, for the health of the commission. Because of Kono believes that at no time have they felt the importance and the effect of the fight against corruption in their lives for the 20 years of the existence of the Anti-Corruption Commission than now. I'm sure you've seen the images. That is why we are putting the images out there so people know that truly when we say the Anti-Corruption Commission is the People's Commission, it's not just in words, mm. it's in action. So Samuel, if there is anything I have appreciated about my time at the ACC, is this tour that I have embarked on with my team? When you engage them, when, all when you go to those people, those places, you engage the people. What came out from them as to what are the challenges? What do they think? What's their perception about the fight against corruption? Oh, Samuel, the people are happy. The people are happy. The public education drive, the prevention measures. Mm -hmm. We sit with councillors, mayors, paramount chiefs, chiefdom administrators public servants who have been sent to these places and they have one thing to say some of these things we did not even we did not even know that it was corruption mm. we are doing them but thanks to the anti-corruption commission we now know paramount chiefs will come and say when we are giving surface rent we thought that we can do anything with it because based on traditional institution what belongs to the chief don't belongs to us but the ACC has made us to understand that there's a clear distinction between what belongs to us and what belongs to our people. And we have a responsibility to make their lives better. Some chiefs take me, some chief them administration take me and say, this is the development we are doing. From that money that was given to us by this mining company. These are things that we are doing. In Kono, for example, where they have the DECOVAC today was the former Riba Hotel, which the Anti-Corruption Commission confiscated from a public servant and gave to them. That is where they are fighting COVID and saving lives. How much more can a place feel the fight against corruption, the effect of the fight against corruption than that? My brother, I want you to come with me. We are going to Puja home in two weeks. And we are going to do a clean sweep of the Kailahum belt from Shegwema to Daru to Pendembu, to Kailahun, and then to Kwendu. I am inviting you to join us, and you sit down and hear the testimonies of the people of Sierra Leone beyond social media. Right. You understand that it is not just that we are receiving international acclaim, but our people are appreciating what we are doing, and that is the most important thing to us. I, I want to zoom in on that, the fact that um, the indices um, are putting 
the commission and yourself, the commissioner, at a very enviable position, uh, whether continentally or globally. Now, how does that get to work, um, especially for you as a person? Um, the things you do, how you go about um, the drive against the, fi uh, the, the, the fight against corruption, and the perception um, that people hold about the fight itself in this country. How do you go uh, about drawing the line and yeah, achieving that? That's what that I have you told you. There's a difference between the data and what people feel in mm. their lives. And that is why I have told you, we move from our comfort zone to go and commune with them, to go and sit with them. For example, we are going to Puja home. It's going to be an open conversation. No politics. Some people think that it is, it is not. It's not political. There's no political agenda. It is part of or in furtherance of the plan to take the commission to the people for the first time. And there has never been anywhere we have gone where the first thing the people say, in 20 years, this has never happened. Mm. And I asked myself, what? We went to Kamakwe, for example. And they were like, the commissioner coming to sit with us in Kamakwe, mm. in Kaide district. We went to Mongo, in Falaba. If you know the road to go to Mongo, you will appreciate what we do. And the people in Mongo said, if anything, we do not appreciate the fact that you even braved this road, Commissioner, to come here for us to sit down and have a conversation on the fight against corruption. We are happy. We went to Bonds, Shabro Island. They said public servants are afraid to sit on the water to come here, but Commissioner, you came. You sat with us. This is unprecedented. But beyond that, they confirm to us with evidence, testimonies, projects, referrals of the success they are fighting corruption. Also, they give me feedback on our staff. How are they doing in the regional offices? When reports are made, what is the reaction time? What is the feedback? How well are they taking the anti-corruption message and following up on complaints and referrals? Trust me, I have been, I have been, I have felt fulfilled. And I believe that the country feels fulfilled. And like I have said, Samuel, come with me. Let's go to, to Pujahun. After Pujahun, let's go to Shebuema. I want you to feel what we feel when we go on these things. You will understand that Sierra Leoneans are no longer the Sierra Leone that used to be. In these rural areas, they are enlightened, they understand the issues, and sometimes they, they explain them. They analyze them in ways that will blow your mind. The, the local people are, are resolved to fight in corruption. But like you, you, you mentioned earlier, the issue of um, politics. How do you see politics play into the fight against corruption? Um, is, it, is it supporting it, um, the fight or because of the different political interests, it's, it somehow puts the fight in a very tough position to win? I've explained to you that the politics wants to hijack the capital in the fight against corruption and weaponize it against their opponents mm. on both sides, on all sides. Right. For the first time, within the story of the fight against corruption in Africa, we are having a conversation on this. Where people who are not the government want to weaponize the fight against corruption for their own ends. We have to hold the balance firstly. Also, when I say this, I don't want people to think that we are unhappy with criticism. No. In fact, we appreciate criticism is a feedback but also we recognize the difference between criticism and cynicism what we see is a callous deployment of cynicism in the system with no evidence or facts to support it mm. and that is where i as a leader come in my responsibility is to protect the institution that i lead and I have a five-year mandate to do so. If the evidence was against us, 
I will recognize. I will be the first to resign. If the data and statistics were against what we are doing at the ACC, the way the politicians want to explain it, trust me, Samuel, I will resign. But I have challenged, I challenge all of them, the entire country. Let's speak with statistics. Let's speak with data. Let's speak with science. Every heading they want to bring, let them bring it. Let's look at it. If it is not better now than it were before, I will resign. But they will not. Because the first way to recognize a cynical human being is when he does not have respect for data and science. They prefer to rely on conjectures. But we are working with the people of Sierra Leone and we know they recognize that we are doing a very difficult job and they are supporting us in it. We are also working with the, our partners and stakeholders within the political parties within the political system, in civil society, in the media, to continue on the trajectory of progress in the fight against corruption and change. And the effect is enormous. Like I have told you, we feel really fulfilled with what we are doing. And people are saying, there's a commissioner, all this thing, when they happen, you just, you, 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 look where you're fresh. It's because, mm. I know that the data is in our favor, the facts are in our favor, the evidence in our favor, every consideration is in our favor. All we have done is to protect the institution mm. that was created independent by law to do its mandate for the good of the people of Sierra Leone, and it's doing it very well, and some people are not happy about it. How do you deal with, um, with whistleblowers in terms of their protection? Honorable William to Akonte, for example, felt betrayed. You did not protect him. Um, I had a chat the last time with Indolo Gevao, Honorable. He felt again betrayed that he was expecting the commission to protect him because he was a whistleblower. And I mean, things like that. And the other day we had um, lawyer Rashid Dumbuya who felt, I mean, there should be a whole or a comprehensive legislation on the issue of whistleblowing and protection. How do you deal with that? You see... Samuel, whistleblowing is a courageous thing. And uh, the concept is a noble one. It's the one that you, you basically believe in something and you are ready to stand with it and you bring it out with facts and evidence to support it. Where there are no facts and evidence, you show a link as to where it can be seen. So, for example, when the Panama Papers were leaked, mm. okay, it is not just say a prime minister in India was given one million dollars to use to run his ministry. Therefore, the prime minister of India has stolen one million dollars. It did not just say officials. In this place, we are giving money to run their institution. They were giving contracts to people. Therefore, they have stolen $1 million. It said that these people were giving $1 million to run the country. Here is an account in Cayman Islands where that $1 million, $500,000 of it was transferred there. Here is a shell company in Mauritius where this politician siphoned money from his country and transferred money there. Here are houses in Bamonzi and Chelsea in England, bought and built by politicians. Here are hidden accounts that they operated. That is whistleblowing. That is whistleblowing. You do not just say, Ben Kaifala at ACC has been allocated $5 million, therefore Ben Kaifala has stolen $5 million. It's not correct. So let's first of all understand what whistleblowing is. We now come to the issue of Honorable Tawa, Honorable Givao and others. Right. Honorable Tawa went on radio. He did not come to the ACC and said that there is corruption in parliament. Honorable Parantarali went and met him there 
and both of them made counter allegations against themselves. Immediately, both of them became suspects. He was no longer a whistleblower. Because, if you remember, Honorable Parantarali said, if I open my mouth against you, the kind of corruption that you are engaging into, your constituents will run after you. Because they gave you money to build a, an office space, you did not build it. Okay. Both of them came to the ACC, were investigated as suspects. Mm. So where is this protection that he's saying that we did not protect him? He was a suspect. But besides, what is the unfairness that we did to Honorable Tawa? Did we need to change his identity when he went on radio to announce himself, accusing parliament? Did he need anything to be hidden about him? No. He did a courageous thing, and we appreciate that courage. But to say that he was such a whistleblower that needed protection from ACC, and ACC did not protect, provide that protection, I am sorry. That is not the meaning of whistleblowing. As for Honorable Gevao, Honorable Gevao said on BBC that there is corruption in Parliament. We invited him to say, come and show us where this corruption is. Give us a lead. Tell us where, who are involved, what has to be done. All Honorable Gevao who say there is corruption in Parliament. He's my friend. He's a brother. But Honorable Gevao gave us nothing at the ACC that could help us go beyond the mere claim that there is corruption in parliament. Is he a whistleblower? No, he's not. He raised an alarm, but he's not a whistleblower. I have explained to you the science of whistleblowing. When Julian Assange became the world celebrated whistleblower, he did not just say people are giving money or people are corrupt in Nicaragua. He said, here is a law firm in Nicaragua that is used to launder money for politicians from across the world. Here are the accounts. Here are the transfers that they did. These are the people who were involved. The entire world plunged into turmoil. That is whistleblowing. So we have to understand the science and architecture behind the words that we use. And all these things are just there to smear the excellent campaign we are having against corruption in Sierra Leone. Why do I not protect these people if there's a need to protect them? But if you go on radio and declare that there's corruption and you call yourself a whistleblower, you need protection out. As we round up, um, this um, negative perception you feel or think people hold about the fight against corruption, especially for their own personal interest, how then do you plan on changing that narrative? How do you hope to to change that particular perception to a positive one that would help the fight against corruption? Public education. Our public education is one of the most powerful in the country. What I am doing now is not because I want to come and sit and talk on radio. It's to also educate the public on the issues. And I'm sure if they follow this program, they will understand where the ACC stands, where the ACC is, and where the ACC is going. So public education is good, but also the only way to cure cynicism is results. We will continue to produce the results. So they say that we are not fighting corruption, but we continue working for the indexes to be better. We continue prosecuting more people and getting convictions in court. Even this morning I signed an indictment to charge somebody to court. They say we are not investigating issues in the current government, we continue to investigate and where the evidence supports, we charge. If we get conviction, well, good. Prevention. We continue to deploy prevention tools in the system for corruption to continue to reduce without it being a fire brigade kind of fight against corruption where you wait for fire to be blazing and the ambulances come running in. You deploy the extinguishers now, the smoke, the smoke detectors, so that when fire comes, it's, it, it, it almost kills itself. That is the engineering that the fight against corruption is built on. That is the engineering that is being successful. And that is the engineering that is continuing to produce the results for the country. Our biggest export as a country right now is not diamond, it's the fight against corruption. All right.
Um, choose not to answer this final question. <laughs> you mentioned it earlier. The tours that you are holding, I mean, you are not oblivious of the, f of the myth people are saying, ah, Francis is not showing his political ambition. But the question is, under what political party? Is it the SLPP? Or no, no, I have no political ambition whatsoever. <laughs> I just you. want to do my job. I have a five-year mandate mm. to fight corruption. And I want to lead at the team at the ACC to do it like has never been done before. No political plan, no politics, certainly no political party. I just want to do what I can do with my team for the good of the people of Sierra Leone. And I'm glad, across my heart, that it is producing such results for the country. Right. I want to retire at the end of the day and look back at this and remember the good that I did for Sierra Leone. So I'm grateful to all of you for helping us disseminate such messages to remove such myths. Let me tell you, things like that are deployed by cynists. They are cynical because once they do that, they try to take away from all the good deeds you are doing for the country because they now make it look like a personal endeavor. He wants to be president, that's why he's doing this. But no, I just want to do my job and do it well. Right. Thank you very much, Francis Ben Kaifala, um, for your time. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, and there you have it from um, the country's anti graft boss, Francis Ben Kaifala. Um, word for word, uh, it's been a very frank conversation. The show has been the interview. Repeat of this particular edition comes up on Friday at 11 p.m. My name is Samuel Weisbangua saying take care of yourself and continue to make AYV your home of all things credible, factual, and all times balanced news. Bye bye. watching AYV television.